Hey guys, it's TF Now. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have another action figure review. This is going to be of the brand new Bandai Tamashi Nations SH Figure Arts Jujutsu Kaisen Zero Yuta Okotsu. Very happy to finally have this figure. We've been waiting for it for a good while. Not super duper long, but <laughs> long enough, honestly. Really, really love Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. I love this movie. And I really ended up liking Yuta a lot. I didn't think he could, you know, be on par with the main three from, you know, season one of the anime. But he, he really is up there. If you've seen it, you know what I mean. Ami Ami shipped mine pretty quick uh, once it came in stock last week. And it took them a while to give me a shipping notification until earlier this week. And now I got it here Wednesday. And you're probably seeing this either Wednesday or Thursday. Anyway, let's go ahead and just take a look at the packaging. It's very basic when it comes to SH Figure Art stuff. It is a little bit wider, just like uh, Gojo's from Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. Compared to the more thinner boxes from the Season 1 characters. The figure in the box with a lot of the contents you see there... You have two different images, one in color and one more of like a just highlighted in blue image of the figure as well. Tamashi Nation's quality sticker, Tamashi Nation's logo, as well as Bandai, the Jujutsu Kaisen Zero logo, and then Bandai Namco at the top here. And then just right here, that's just a quick read up of what the SH Figure Arts line is. So when we get to this side, you can see some icons showing off some of the different features and accessories of Utah. SH Figure Arts, the character's name, and Jujutsu Kaisen Zero with some nice blue going on there pretty much just you know the name of the series character you know the toy uh, the line and all that on the top here you can see an image of utah right there the character's name dude zero all that stuff that's going to be on pretty much every side like sx figure arts and all this will be on pretty much every side of the box and then a different image right there of utah on the back here some different poses and accessories you can insert into this figure different range of motion that you get out of this guy since i got this imported from ami ami there is no uh, bluefin sticker here but you do have ages 15 and up toho animation warning choking hazard and then a barcode in case you need it but you're really going to get this online so yeah let's go ahead and get this figure out of the packaging Here's the figure out of the packaging. I am very pleased with this figure. I think Tomash Nations did a very good job overall. I don't have many complaints here. We're going to have to wait and see if I do. But overall, still a very solid figure. Let's go ahead and take a look at the accessories. Don't take a close look at the figure. So it looks like my instruction manual is a little bit warped here. But as you can see, this goes over all the different accessories, how to interchange the parts, as well as it gives you warnings. You know, uh, this is sharp that may have some paint rub and this area is delicate and all that so even though you may be experienced with these figures i do think it's still a uh, smart thing to uh read this up it doesn't really hurt to familiarize yourself with some of these parts so we're going to start off with the alternate faces and i think that they all came through really nice so here is the more somber uh yuta face that we have if i can hold it properly but as you can see, this is the one on the left. That's the one he comes packaged with. They're very similar in sculpt and approach. Uh, they're not the exact same, of course, just because of the mouth shape alone. Um, I do think that the sunken eyes are almost the exact same when it comes to the face, um, the paint, I should say. I was going to say printing. It's, it's printing, too. Anyway, I think the eyes are almost the exact same, but his eyes right here are just a little bit wider. I think the eyebrow shapes are a little bit different, too. But the actual paint on here is really clean. It's like a matte finish to all these fa uh, faces on the skin tone. The uh, gray and his pupils right there. That looks really good. Sunken eyes look great too. All that paint. There's no splotching anywhere right, here, right above the eyes there. And then the uh, eyebrows. Sometimes, now it's not bad here, but sometimes with these mouths, when they have paint, sometimes it's just like halfway on there or not on there at all. I've had that with maybe a couple figures. It doesn't happen often. That's something I did want to mention. But it looks fine here. We have a slightly angrier face right here with a really nice scrunched uh, bent eyebrows. And then, you know, difference in the eyes are a little bit shorter this time because of how angry he is. And then you have the open mouth, which has some really good paint with the red and the white. None of that mixes together. I do want to mention that I think... I, I, this might be just the camera picking this up. I think the red from the mouth is ever so slightly, and I mean like very microscopic almost. You have to look too hard. Um, the red might be bleeding onto the like outside, like on the cheeks. But like in person, I'm looking at it right now, it doesn't look that bad. Again, there's no like paint splotching at all. All that is very clean, so that's sick. 
And then we have an ing uh, even angrier face here with the very small pupils. The way that they painted that looks great, as well as, you know, uh, even more bent uh, eyebrows, all that, the scrunching, you know, going in, the t basically inward uh, towards the uh, face there. All oh, that looks great. And then we have a very large, you know, mouth there. The very wide, I should say. The tongue is really nicely painted. You know, a little bit different red here compared to the inside of the mouth and the, the, the teeth. Yeah, that looks great. So those faces are really awesome. Now, of course, every hand is going to come with, uh, you, you have different sets of hands and every left hand is going to have a ring on it. Now with this particular one, it looks like I can see a little bit more of the skin, like the actual sculpting that they have on there. Uh, it looks more like skin tone than silver, but it, the actual paint uh, on there is not too splotched. Um, and it's even on the inside of the hand, which is nice. So, you know, even though I see a little bit of the skin sculpt going on there, you know, in some angles you can't tell uh, just because how good what paint is there is applied. And these hands are all done in a pretty glossy finish. There's very light, uh, very, very minimal, I should say, um, amounts of skin variation like on the back of the thumbs and on the back of the hands it's a little bit lighter but like in between the index and the thumb there it's a little bit darker has a little bit of shading and that's what the inside of the hands look like they're not super duper detailed but you know they're fine for what they are and then we have these smaller grip hands you can see the silver paint on there is nice too and these are rather um rather small grips these double as the katana and the uh, Cursed Speech Megaphone hands. These are a little bit harder, uh, yeah, a little bit of a hard plastic, so be careful when you bend them open. You will have to do that for some of the accessories there, so just be careful. You may wanna heat these up just ever so slightly with some hot water. Um, yeah, there's not much going on here. I forgot to mention individual uh, fingernails. All that looks great too. All these have individual fingernails. And then we have these much more open hands as you can see here. So, you know, these this sprawled hand, I should say, it has that issue I was talking about where I can see a little bit more skin tone. I don't get that with, where for it? I don't get that with this one. I think that they did a really good job evenly painting that silver on there where you can't see skin tone. And then same thing going on here. That's what the inside of the hands look like. These are much larger grips, as you can see, which, you know, also have individual fingernails sculpted on there because you have the sword holsters, or the, the bag, I should say. It's not really holsters. Um, it's not even a holster, no matter what you call it. I think it's just a sheath. And, um, yeah, this bag here, this is what it's meant for, you know, these hands are. Uh, you just take these wide hands, and you grab them like so, and they fit on there rather nicely. So, speaking of, I do want to mention the bags. I'll have to back out just a little bit here. So the bags, as you can see, we have one that has a strap that is smaller, and it is a soft plastic still, but you can't pull that out at all. You have one where the strap is all the way out. As you can see, they're about the exact same sculpt, same paint and everything, just slight difference with this soft plastic piece here, and that's fine with me. Maybe one of, like, this one could have some sculpting where it looks open, and, you know, it looks like the katana is not in there, but I'm not going to knock it, and it's cool that we have... Uh, you know, an option for him to carry this and wrap it around his waist. Almost done. We do have the cursed speech tool that he uses against uh, uh, Ghetto in that fight. The uh, cursed speech megaphone here, which has the really nice Inumaki clan uh, sigil on there. A little bit of dark gray paint around the rim here. I think there's, I think it's mostly molded in this uh, beige color. And then this is painted really nice to where, I don't know if this is all one piece. This looks like they glued this on here and like they molded it in this color. But if that's how clean the paint is to where I don't see any like splotching going on to the beige there, I think, yeah, I do think it's just all one piece. It still looks really good. I really like the matte finish on the gray here. Um, and you know, it's just molded in this color, but I still think it looks good. You have the trigger on there. That's looking rather nice. I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like holding it like that so you, again you got to be pretty careful when you do that last but not least i want to talk about the katana which is really nice the blade is done super well and yes this is sharp 
So be careful with that. But it has, it has a very nice metallic silver here. Really great metallic gold going around the uh, uh, the hilt, I, I guess. Uh, I forget. I don't know the exact terminology of parts of a katana. But you have the handle here, which the good thing about this handle is it's molded in this red. Uh, even though there's no paint on there, I think the overall sculpt is really clean. And that's a good thing because, I mean, you, this, this gold pommel might cause some problems but you open that up and sometimes if you leave the accessory in the hands the uh you know the color of the accessory will want to bleed onto the skin tone so because there's no actual paint here and it's just molded in this uh red plastic i don't think you're going to have that much of an issue with the red bleeding onto the skin tone it's still a possibility so i wouldn't pose this figure all the time like this you know with the katana in this hand but it's still nice that they thought ahead and they're like, yeah, we can make it look good without paint. So yeah, this thing is really awesome. Okay, super sorry for that super long uh, accessory section. Yikes, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff with this figure. Let's go ahead and talk about the overall sculpt and detail. One thing I do wanna mention is a couple of my nitpicks and they're really not that major. So if you see around the stomach here, there's a little bit of blue shading in those uh, creases. There's even some of that on the back of the figure but it's not consistent throughout the rest of this shirt. It would have been nice if they touched up. You know, I know that you know, this is a soft plastic and this is a harder plastic, so maybe it wasn't gonna look all that right, but I still think they should have attempted yeah, at least a little bit of shading in different areas, like in the arms. These pieces right here for the shoulders, they're soft plastic too, so they could have done that in there. Um, and maybe even the collar. And you know, it's the way that it's done here, it's subtle enough to where it doesn't get in the way, so I like how they did it. Uh, I just I just think it's kind of weird that it's only around the stomach and the waist. The only other thing I want to mention is that while the hair sculpt is really nice, and this is pretty consistent with the rest of this particular line of the series, uh, there is really not a lot of paint. It's mostly just like molded in this one. There may be a tiny bit of like a matte coat on here, but there's no like paint variation on here like uh, the Jujutsu Kaisen Zero version of Gojo. That actually That hair actually had some paint on there. So that's a little disappointing, but the actual sculpt is still really nice. I'm not going to knock on it too much. You see all the nice spiked pieces. You can see it looks like they've overlapped some of the sculpting on there, looking really nice. And that you can tell that the seam line is there, but it's not super noticeable, unlike Nobara, which I think she has it the worst out of all of them so far. This face that he has here is rather nice, the smiling. It's still pretty sad looking, but that's just kind of how he looks a lot of the time with the sunken eyes, as well as the uh, the mouth color right there. Looking rather nice. I do think his cheeks are just a little too wide. I think they need to be a little bit more narrow. Uh, this is that, that could go for pretty much all the hands. What I like is that we do have some nice wrinkles throughout the whole, you know, white of the suit, but also they did a really good job you know, if you mess with the articulation, you're gonna break up the seams. But, you know, you have this, the way that his uh, shirt is designed, you have this long line going around, up down the uh, the collar and then around the chest and all that you can see. And what I mean is, of course, you know, you can line it up like that, but if you move it around again, you're gonna break that up. But it's still cool that they, you know, this line looks as good as it does. And we do have this nice gold button there. You know, it's not the, the most detailed when it comes to the sculpting, but the fact that there is no splotching on the gold, that looks great. There's even a little bit of minor uh, wrinkles in these soft plastic shoulder pieces, which can sometimes be a little bit hard to make this all natural because the idea is you pull these out a little bit and then you push this in and it doesn't break up, you know, the sculpt too much, but sometimes they just want to sink into the chest and you see these exposed joints. The uh, metal on the joints, I understand why they use them, so they're a little bit more sturdier. They are a little distracting, though, when you have this big silver piece compared to the rest of that white there. I'm not going to knock it too much just because of, you know, the functionality there is what they're focusing on. I don't know if I showed off the back that much, but we, do have, we have some pretty nice subtle wrinkles on the back. And even though this is a softer plastic and this is a harder plastic, they've made this look very consistent. They did a good job with that. Speaking of consistent, we have this skin tone painted onto the white sculpted uh you know forearm here and then you have the hands 
but you can tell they are a little bit glossy but i still think that the uh the, the consistency of the skin tone is really nice going from the hand into the forearm i do think the uh, wrist peg is also a little too glossy but i i'm not gonna i'm I, how many times am i gonna say i'm not gonna knock it too much it, it just looks good it's not perfect but it it could look a lot worse um i know like marvel legends sometimes they'll paint skin tone on here and they'll mold something in the skin tone and it's not consistent at all so they did a relatively good job and i didn't really mention the fists here you can see that ring on the fist there and the, yeah these are a little bit glossy but we do have some pretty nice details you know when the uh wherever you know what i don't know exactly if there's a term for you know this little spot right here when you make a fist and there's just a little bit of a hole for the hands but you know there you go is there anything else I need to mention i don't think i mentioned the arms because they have this really nice uh you know pretty i wouldn't say super poofy but you know it's pretty baggy here they have some nice wrinkles. This is a separate piece. I do think the ball joints on the actual elbows going outward are a little too distracting. They stick out a little too much, but they don't look too bad. They do have some sculpted white here. So that way, if you need to bend this back more, so you don't, you know, the joint that's in there, which you can see a little bit now, but that's not going to be, you know, too <laughs> immersion breaking, I guess, when it comes to the overall aesthetic of the figure. We have the nice white belt with the tie right there on the front. Pretty nice wrinkles on the front as well. And there's the back, which is a little bit of wrinkling as well. One thing I want to mention is I think that this is molded in this uh, very dark. It's not completely black. It's a very dark gray, but it's almost black uh, color here. And I think the actual hips are painted because it, it just feels a little bit smoother here. And it feels a little bit more matte. Yeah, I can, actually, I can actually feel paint here. But I do want to mention, you know, right here on this right hip, it looks like there's something going on. There's a little bit of glossiness. I don't know what's going on there. I don't think I did that. I think it's been like that. So that's a little weird, whatever's going on there. But I just noticed that uh, not too shortly before I started this section. So it wasn't too noticeable before. Very subtle, but still, you know, prominent enough. Wrinkles going all the way, uh, all the way down here. And a little bit of a, I don't know if it's the way that they have, you know, put some of these pieces together and molded it together, but I don't know if they attempted a seam line. That might just be the actual, you know, putting the pieces of the figure together. But the wrinkles around the knees, all that looks great. And even around the ankles and the calves, all that looks great too. There's not, it's mostly smooth. It looks like it's a little bit flat too on the back here. On oh, the back of the knees, I should say. And then the shoes look great. I love how these shoes came out, man. This little separate piece right here still looks like it's actually part of the shoe, and no, even though you can see the ball joint a little bit when you move it around. But the white mixed in with the off-white, none of that paint splotches in there at all. I think that looks really good. Um, and on the, the top of these laces, the way that they are sculpted, they look kind of animated. So it looks like it came, it looks a little bit more like it came out of the manga or the anime. So I like how you know, these are done. Very, very clean paint throughout all of these. You have the off-white, you know, toes, red sole, uh, seam lines, whatever these are around the heels and the sole, I should say. Yeah, man, that is really clean paint. And then that's what the bottom of the feet looks like. There's not much sculpting there, but there's a little bit of serial printing right there. Articulation is also really great on this figure. We have two different areas of, you know, joints and swiveling here. We have a dumbbell joint going into the actual head, and then we have an actual separate piece of the neck. So when you add all of this, the actual, well, first of all, the actual head doesn't want to really want to move around that much. It's a little bit loose too, but you add the neck joint here, it can go back that far, forward pretty far as well. The tilting's really nice, swiveling, no problem. Again, it's a little bit loose at the actual head but this swivels just fine you have a great range of motion at the uh where it would be a butterfly joint basically you can go outward like this and there's a ball joint in there so it can go forward or back you know you can move it around all the way it goes all the way around like that uh it, this there's potential that if you're not too careful here it could break but it's not super fragile here i i do want to mention that's as far out as that wants to go. So that's really sick upper arm swivel here. We do have a single joint elbow that does get a little bit over 90. I wish it was a little bit of a better bend, but you know, 
the way it, that they, you know, the way that it looks in the anime, that's how they're doing it here. So that's fine. Uh, we do have actually a separate piece here. Looks like it can, you know, pivot a little bit. It's almost like it's on a ball joint here at the forearm. So it moves around. That's really sick. And this piece here can swivel a little bit because it's a separate piece. We have the standard wrist articulation hinging forward and back. And you can rotate this. And then, you know, and you can also, you know, have the ball joint at the hand, which this hand likes to pop off a little too easily. So you get all this range of motion. We have pretty good stomach and waist articulation, two different ball joints. It's actually much better at the stomach here compared to the waist and it's not too bad here either so with all that extra you know articulation that's as bad, far back as it wants to go as far forward it wants to go just be careful because this soft plastic piece has a tendency to overlap on the hard plastic and you can ruin the way that that is sculpted swiveling's pretty good and you also have a little bit of tilting too legs go forward like that could be better back unfortunately ah, it's actually not too bad really perfect splits Upper thigh swivel, double jointed knees. We have a swivel here at the ankle, up and down. Hinge could be a little bit better. We have an actual ankle rocker and then toe hinge. So here we have all of the SH figure arts, Jujutsu Kaisen figures that we have so far and Ghetto has not been released yet. Can't wait for that figure. But even though we have this zero version of Yuta, which you know exists a year before you know the main students that you see here, it's going to be, I think, the second tallest out of all the students. He's really close in scale, or in height, I should say, with Yuji, who I believe is the tallest. If you exclude uh, Fushiguro's hair, of course. No bar is going to be the shortest out of all of them. But of course, because he's a grown adult, Gojo is going to be the tallest out of all of them. And I think the Zero version is taller than the previous Gojo. Overall, I am very satisfied with this figure. I know when I had my nitpicks, it seemed like I dwelled on it a little too much, but they are so microscopic, it does not get in the way of me enjoying this figure at all. I think they did Yuta almost perfectly here. Biggest issues are just that the inconsistent paint shading, mostly, you know, around the waist and stomach where there's a little bit of blue there, as well as on the back. There's nowhere else of that throughout the whole figure where there probably should be. And then there really isn't any paint in the hair this figure would have benefited from that. But that's really it. <laughs> this figure is amazing. The way that it is molded and sculpted, the overall engineering and articulation is really great. As well as some different flesh tones in here, mostly talking about the forearm and the hands, actually like melding together really well to where it looks consistent. It's really nice. You know, the shoes and the pants all have some pretty nice details as well. Those accessories, the amount of stuff that we get as well as the actual paint and sculpting of all the accessories is really awesome. This figure comes with pretty much everything you need besides, you know, an end credit scene hair uh, head, you know, a different hair piece with slightly longer hair. But overall, I am very satisfied with this figure. I will leave links down in the description below where you can pre-order this. Hopefully, AmiAmi Ami has some in stock. I have no idea right now. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Comment down below what you think about the figure, what you think about the review. Leave a like, share amongst your friends. Follow me on Instagram for more content over there, and I'll see you guys later.